Hi guys, Squirrel here, and uh, today I am going to be covering crew and crew skills for you guys. I get a lot of questions about this stuff. How, you know, what is crew? How do I use them effectively? What do I spend my points? What do all the different skills mean? Uh, I'm going to talk you through that. Let's start off by covering some of the basics for people who are pretty new to War Thunder. Uh, down the bottom here, you've got various crew slots. Now, think of each crew slot as a hangar. That's the easiest way to visualize it. Each of these is uh, a crew with an aircraft in a hangar. So in this place here, this is where your crew would hang out, and this is where they'll service the aircraft, and then, you know, they'll get in the plane and fly it. Um, now, this is the crew tab. You see that little icon there, the little crew guy? If you click on that, it will bring up the crew for this aircraft, the P-26A-33. This is a reserve aircraft. I've not flown uh, many American planes, so when you start the game, you're going to end up with three hangar slots here, three lots of crew and three reserve aircraft. What you'll then do is earn points, earn lions, the in-game currency, and you can buy more slots. As you can see, if I wanted to buy a fifth hangar slot and a fifth crew, it's going to cost me 50,000 lions. That sounds a lot, but uh, once you get into the game, that won't take you very long to get that many, that many lions. You'll notice that some of these aircraft have a little crew symbol on them. That means that I have unused points. If I was to click on that, you'll see I've got 13 points that I could spend on any of the skills. Now you see I haven't spent a single point at all in any of my crew skills and I'm going to cover those in a second. Contrast that with something like um, uh, my British fight, my British planes. Here's my Spitfire. You can see you know, I've maxed out a few of these. I've got quite a lot of points spent here. I'm getting a lot of bonuses. Uh, I'm even got an ace crew with the Spitfire and I'll cover that in a second. Okay, so the other thing to mention about your crew slots is it's very important that you decide up front which crew are going to be flying which kind of plane. And by kind of plane, I mean, are they going to be a fighter or are they going to be a bomber stroke attacker? The reason for this is quite simple. When you view the crew tab, you can ignore entirely this gunner section here if your crew is going to be flying only single single seat fighter aircraft this gunner tab is literally for just the ai in the back of your aircraft in other words if you're flying something like a wellington or a bow fighter um, which has as it shows here this has one gunner in the back then you are going to need some points in your gun in your ai gunner crew in order to have them perform effectively and be able to actually shoot some aircraft on your six if, however, you're going to be flying Spitfires or other fighter aircraft, you can ignore this tab completely. Do not put any points into here. So what that means for you is you need to decide up front which of your crew are going to be flying with AI in the back and make sure you only put AI, um, sorry, aircraft with AI in them into that crew. If you put them into one of your other crew, which only has, uh, you've only spent points in pilot and ground service, then you're going to be wasting your time because your AI is going to be shooting and missing pretty much everything on your six. So for that reason, I've only got two slots here that I focus uh, focus my points on gunners. Coming back to the Spitfire, then. Now then, what are these uh, what are these crew skills, and you know where should you spend your points first? Well, first and foremost, for a fighter aircraft, there are two primary things that you need. The first one is the G-tolerance. Now, the G-tolerance is your, your personal ability when you're flying around to resist the effects of G-force. So when you pull a tight turn and your, your uh, screen starts to black out, that's you pulling a high G-turn, and the blood is, is unable to get to your brain anymore, and you feel the blackout effects. The more points you spend into this, the more you'll be able to resist that and pull high, uh, high G-turns without feeling that blackout effect. That also affects the red out, which is the negative G. So if you're flying along and you push your stick forward and take a dive straight down, the blood rushes to your head because you've got negative G forces and you'll start to see a red out effect. Actual fact, red Gs, uh, negative Gs are much more dangerous than positive Gs in real life, but that's just a side effect. Uh, if you go to ground service, this is the reload speed. This is another super important skill for everybody. Reload speed affects the rate at which your bombs and machine guns and cannons get reloaded, not just 
on the ground when you land on a, a runway, but also when you're in the air and you reload. This is obviously very important, particularly in dogfighting, because the faster you can get your guns reloaded, the faster you can shoot down enemies. So this, coupled with G-Force, very important for fighters. Keen vision and visibility. These these skills are paired up, really. They affect, they kind of, one's a counter to the other. Keen vision is when you're looking around in the sky, which you can do uh, if you use the, hold down the C key and you sort of mouse look around. Whenever you're looking or scanning the sky, this extends the range and ability for you to detect and identify enemy aircraft. That only works in the direction you're looking. So if you see an enemy aircraft with, keen, with a high keen vision, much greater chance, much greater range of being able to see what his name is, what kind of aircraft he's flying, and therefore if he's a threat to you or if he's a potential target for you. The opposite to that is visibility. This counters keen vision, so if the, if the other pilot you're looking at has the same number of points in visibility as you have in keen vision, these two things are going to be cancelled out by each other. This is the dampener to keen vision. This resists your ability to be detected in your aircraft. Now, moving down to stamina and vitality, these two uh, these two abilities at the moment are a little bit semi-transparent in their effect. As it says, the stamina allows you to resist fatigue for long periods of time uh, and the accuracy and G-tolerance decreases over periods of time. Now, if you're flying arcade games, this is unlikely to be that important to you because in arcade games, you tend to fly aircraft around for much shorter periods of time. And if you're in a historic battle in a 20 or 30 or 40 minute uh, mission, obviously the stamina of you and your crew is going to be very important. As you start to pull uh, G-force turns, if you start to blacking out and redding out, this is going to affect your stamina and therefore your accuracy as you're flying around. It's your ability to resist those effects and for how long is what stamina is. You might think to yourself, well, you know, there's no point putting any points in here, is there? Because, you know, I'm only flying arcade battles. Well, that's true to some extent, but I will show you later why I've got so many points in stamina and vitality. Uh, it's because it helps me to skill up qualifications because these things are quite cheap to skill up. Now, your vitality, again, another semi-transparent thing, probably because the game's in, in beta at the moment, but this affects your you and your crew. And if you get wounded, it's how quickly you heal back. None of this information is displayed anywhere. You can't see how wounded you are. You can't see um, how injured you are. You can't see the effects it's having. So it's a little bit weird, this one at the moment. But as you'll see later, it's worth spending points in this, but not immediately. Focus on the other stuff first. Let's move over to ground service because pilot and ground service are very important for fighters. Reload speed, uh, sorry, repair, repair speed. Um, this, this affects your ability to repair your aircraft. Now, this is when you land on a runway, let's say you, you, you get a broken wing or a broken engine, you land on the runway and you're sat there all nice and vulnerable and the timer starts counting down. Uh, this will improve that repair speed time. So that's quite an important ability when you, well, it's situational at the end of the day. If you're not landing much on the runway, then it's not really gonna affect you. However, it does have another effect. It also uh, changes the repair speed in the hangar. When you go out on a battle and you come back and your, your aircraft has all got bullet holes and it's all shot to shit, if you've got this automatic repair turned off, as I have, you will see that. You'll see all the bullet holes and this little, This might even be red if the, crew, if the aircraft is bang out of action and you have a little spanner icon here that you can click to just instantly repair it. If you've got this thing ticked, then you'll never see that because when the aircraft comes out of the battle, it will automatically be repaired. You'll get lines deducted for you and uh, it'll always look at 100% like this, in which case you don't need to worry too much about that repair speed. That's fine initially, but once you start getting about sort of tier five or higher, those repairs, those repairs um, costs get quite expensive. Uh, for example, if I was to show you the, um, the Bowfighter, you can see the average repair cost 4,300 lines. Now contrast that with something like uh, this thing. Uh, it's free at the moment, unfortunately. I can't really show you that. There you go. Average repair cost 1,100. It's all to do with the tier of the aircraft you're flying. It gets very expensive. Some of them, the Spitfire Mark II, is a particularly expensive aircraft. 
I take that thing out and a five grand re repair cost when I come back is a real kick in the nuts. So what I do is I have this turned off. I will let that thing just sit in the hangar and you can see just underneath the average repair cost is the time to repair for free. So if I was to leave this, this aircraft in the hangar, it'll just repair after 16 hours and it'll cost me absolutely nothing. The speed that happens is affected by this repair speed here. The more points you have in it, the quicker all of those repairs will happen. That helps to keep the cost down of things. That's what that's about and also means that when you're on the runway, you're less vulnerable for less time. The next thing that goes hand in hand with that is the repair rank. Now the repair rank of the aircraft, uh, sorry, of the crew, this is the, the rank of aircraft they can repair. Okay, so this all of these benefits they have, repair speed, will only apply if this number here is greater than or equal to this number down here. This is a tier 8 Spitfire. This repair rank of this crew is currently on 8. If I was to change this, if I was to uh, swap this crew's aircraft to a tier 10, then this crew would no longer be able to repair that with these bonuses applied. They would just repair it at the normal rate, very, very slow rate. They can still repair it in the hangar, but they can't apply any of these bonuses, so it's going to take a long time. Make sure when you swap an aircraft into this crew, just double check that repair rank is at the right level. Real speed I've already talked about. This is the speed of which your machine gun cannons and bombs come back. Very, very, very important for every, every crew in the game. And healing speed is another one of those uh, semi-transparent things, a bit like the old vitality over here. This is the, the, the kind of medic skill. This is the rate at which your, your pilots and your gunners re, you know, heal back from being wounded. Now, if, if your crew is wounded, they will take longer to repair the aircraft. So if this is high, they'll heal themselves up fairly quickly and then get on with repairing your aircraft. None of this is transparent in the game at the moment, so it's all a little bit of a cloak and dagger affair, but as I'll show later, I've got it maxed out, the same as these, because they're cheap to max out, and that will help you get those qualifications. Okay, so that's the uh, pilot and the ground service covered. Let's cover the gunner tab. Now, the gunner tab has uh, stamina, vitality, and G-tolerance. These are exactly the same as I just explained over in the pilot, except these apply to your, your gunners. So the guys in the back of your aircraft shooting those guns, they also have effects of G-tolerance. They also have some stamina, and they also have vitality. And in the same way you've put in points into here, you can put points into your crew's tolerance, stamina, and vitality. So we won't cover those. What we will cover is these three. Let's, let's flick over to my bowfighter. Now, my bowfighter, if you look at the top here, it says bowfighter mark 6, C, number of gunners, 1. There's one gunner in the back of this aircraft. Now, you need to make sure that the number of experienced gunners is at least equal to or greater than the number of gunners in that aircraft. Let me show you what happens if that's not the case. Let's flick over to my Wellington. And you will see, I swapped this Wellington in to this crew, and this crew currently has two experienced gunners, but the Wellington has four gunner seats. So you can see straight away, I am getting negative uh, effects on all of these three, and that's bad. So what I need to do is I need to spend points and increase the number of gunners that I have in my crew. Skilled gunners I need to train them up, and then these penalties will go away. So what is fire accuracy? Okay, fire accuracy is, think of the guy, the AI gunner. It's basically his ability to point the gun at the enemy aircraft and lead the target and be accurate doing so. Okay, so that's his ability to actually be a marksman. That contrasts with the fire precision. The fire precision is, if you like, the cone of fire, of spread of the rounds coming out of his gun. The higher the precision, the narrower that cone of fire will be. So the accuracy is point the gun in the right direction and the precision is decrease the cone of fire so the bullet spread is smaller and more rounds will hit. Both of these things obviously need to be as high as possible because then your gunner is going to shoot things in the right direction and more of the rounds are going to land and do damage. That's the gunner explained. The final thing to explain to you is qualification. Let's go and look at the Spitfire for a second, okay? And in my qualification tab, you will see I have them on ace, 
they have been fully trained on the Spitfire their ace crew with a Spitfire with these other aircraft that they have been in before they are they have actually I've actually trained them to fly in these aircraft but they are or to service them but they are not upgraded to expert expert is what comes next and you need lines to upgrade to expert you then need gold to upgrade to ace the cost is literally um, dependent on the tier of the aircraft so the higher the tier the more this is going to cost you I'm afraid things get more expensive at high tier that's there's no two ways around that okay let's have a look at how to skill up a crew pretty much from scratch here's my yak 7b this is a Russian aircraft uh, and you can see that my uh, crew skill points are pretty low at the moment I've got 10 10 17 no qualifications I'm not getting any bonuses I haven't even spent anything in ground service yet pretty low now you can either go out and play this aircraft and you can skill it up and spend your points or if you've got a little less time on your hands another way of doing it is to use accelerated training now accelerated training is one of those things where people start screaming pay to win pay to win but at the end of the day there's a fact of life that some people have more time on their hands and uh, less money and other people have more money and less time this is not going to give you a winning combination this just means that you can if you like swap a bit of money and boost yourself up to a higher level more quickly that's going to let, let you play in high level planes and it's going to give your crew a bit more skills rather than just spending hours and hours grinding if you like uh, whether you decide that's pay to win or not that's up to you either way it's in the game and i'm going to show you how to use it now if you click sorry if you click on accelerated training what i'm going to do is i'm going to buy some xp points to train my crew with and what i'm trying to get to is a basic qualification up to expert now in order to get to experts as you can see I need to already have 150 crew level this is a total number of points that I have allocated in these various skills all added up together must come to 150 before I can train my crew to be experts in the yak 7b accelerated training uh, I have a number of options here I can spend one uh, golden eagle 10 100 or a thousand but don't forget you can actually do this more than one time so what I like to do is this one this is going to give me a thousand crew points plus a bonus of 500 and it's going to cost me a hundred golden eagles now I think I worked this out for me that's about one pound one British pound I think uh, which is probably going to come in at about a dollar and a half in American money so again you need to decide if you want to do this or not but I'm just going to show you how to do it for this training video if I click buy that's going to instantly give me 1500 points and I can click it again which cost me another 100 so I've spent 200 of my golden eagles and I've now got over 3000 points to spend that should be plenty to get me skilled up now remember I told you that some of the important things to have are the reload speed and repair speed but watch the reload speed okay as I start, it's costing me one at the moment, but pretty quickly you'll see this is going to start ranking up. Look, all of a sudden it's now costing me 20 points to skill at one point of reload speed. Contrast that, for example, with the healing speed. If I take this up, that's now on 10 and it's only costing me three. Now, earlier I said to you, you might want to ignore healing speed and stamina and vitality that's one thing you can do it's not as important but this is getting me quickly towards this and when I get towards this you'll see in a second I will get some nice benefits so there you go I can whack those on 30 each that's another 60 points I'm getting ever closer to that magic 150 I'm almost there and I've not spent very much I've spent what um, just over 300 points let's just apply that I've now got a crew skill of 128 admittedly I've put it in some things that aren't terribly useful but let's just take that to the next level let's just boost my G force my G tolerance up a little bit let's take this up to there apply that and 150 required ground service let's put some points in repair speed I definitely need that 
You see the cost of this one is rising quickly as well. So that's now costing me 20 each. But there we go. I've now got a crew level of 156. That's enough to train to spend 42,000 lines on this Yak-7. Remember, this cost is dictated by the tier of the aircraft. For this tier 5, that costs 42,000. I didn't spend many points on these things here, but watch what happens when I upgrade. Click this. Do you want to spend 42,000 lines? Yes, I do. Thank you very much. And you can see that's now moved up. So the next thing I need to do is get to 450 before I'll be able to train these to the expert level. But look what I just got. I just got plus 30 on my repair speed. Now, I had 15 in that, and it was costing me quite a lot, and I just got plus 30. If I was to add 30 more points onto this, so if I was to take that to 45, look at the cost. It's horrendous. It's absolutely horrendous. It cost me so many points. And that is why I put points in healing speed and stamina and vitality is because they're so cheap. Because they are so cheap, they'll get you to this expert level very, very quickly for not many points. I've only spent 600 points, and already I'm getting 30 bonuses to vision, visibility, repair speed, and reload speed. Absolute beautiful. So now I'm just free to spend my points on whatever I like. Um, again, G-force, G-tolerance is particularly important because I'm going to be dogfighting in this thing. We'll take that up to 40. Um, we'll take this up to 22, just as it starts to... What I like to do is just keep my eye on the, uh, the cost per skill level. Now, when you come to upgrade this to... When you want to get this up to Ace, if you like, which you need 450 before you can even do it, you'll want to max out Stamina, Vitality, and Healing Speed because they are very cheap to do relative to everything else. But for now, I'm not going to touch those anymore. I'm just going to concentrate on the abilities that I need to be an effective fighter pilot, which is vision stability, G-tolerance, uh, repair speed, reload speed, and repair rank. Again, remember what I said before, I need to bring that up to five. I have no choice about this. That has to match the tier of my aircraft, otherwise none of these bonuses are going to apply. But now I'm free to spend all these points, reload speed. I'm going to bring that right up. I do not want to be flying around without any rounds to shoot people down with. But that's getting awfully expensive very quickly now. Look at this. That's getting 18 and 95. And, whew, too much for my blood. <laughs> so, let's, let's stick down the lower numbers. Repair speed, bring that down a touch. And I think G-Force... I want to be able to pull sharp turns in my yak. Very important. One thing to... Whoops. Let's bring that down. One thing to uh, remember, of course, is when you look at your aircraft and you look at the turn time, this is a 21-second turn time. That's pretty good. That's a, a very tight turn that the yak can pull, which is going to subject me to a lot of strong G-force. So it's very important in this aircraft that I keep my G-force high. Um, my G-tolerance height. That's not so important later on if you start flying some of the other aircraft that have a much larger turning circle. For example, this has a turn time of 30. That's going to be pulling far less Gs unless I go into any steep dives, but in terms of just banking around, I'm not going to pull the G-forces like I am in the Yak. So again, you just need to decide where you want to put your points. Uh, skill yourself up. Uh, focus on the things I've just mentioned. And I think repair speed I'm going to bring up. And we're pretty much done. Let's apply that. That's given me a total crew level of 238. That cost me 200 lines, um, which is, you know, it's not a lot of money. And for that, I've taken my crew in this aircraft to quite a good level. I've gone from nothing to 55 keen vision, 55 visibility, 50 on the G tolerance. And my repair speed has been boosted, 58. And my reload speed, 54. That's a pretty good bet from, from being a noob crew in this aircraft to being pretty damn good at repairing and uh, flying around as a pilot. That's what I would do. Uh, it's up to you now. You can then accelerate yourself up uh, to get yourself towards Ace, or you can go and spend a couple of hundred Golden Eagles on some other crew and get yourself expert in those. Now remember, these are not wasted points. 
they're not wasted points because if I uh, fly for a while and then I swap the aircraft that this crew is in, they will bring all of these skills with them. All of this training is never wasted. The only thing it will cost me is when I bring that aircraft in, it'll say, you need to cross train onto this aircraft and it's going to cost me lines to do so. So if I was to swap this aircraft now and let's say bring over to an IL-2, it's going to say, so every top of this craft, you must pass the conversion cost, six and a half thousand lines. Do you want to go ahead? Yep. And there you go. I brought all of my skills with me. All the skills that I trained them in. The only thing that's missing is the bonuses. And the reason they're not that I'm not getting bonuses is because I need to upgrade to experts. So if I want to, I can spend more lines and become an expert in the IL-2. I'll then get all of my bonuses back. But this stuff is never wasted, okay? Once these things are maxed out, you'll never need to do it for this crew again. The only thing you'll need is qualifications. One final thing to remember, uh, or just to point out to you before we end this video, is bombers. I went in and fixed this, obviously. I brought up the number of gunners to four, so you can see those penalties have gone. Visibility. Uh, you want this to be high as a bomber. Because if you remember, this counters the other pilot's keen vision. So as a bomber, the last thing you want is to be seen and detected. That's going to create you as a target. People will fly over to you and start having a go at you. Get this visibility up as high as you can, as soon as you can. And that will reduce the chances of aircraft flying over to, uh, to engage you. Remember, of course, if you fly up into the clouds as well, that greatly helps to reduce your visibility. And as a bomber, that's a good thing. So... Don't forget to spend points in visibility as a bomber. That's all for this video. Uh, I'm just going to wrap it up there. Hopefully you learned quite a bit. If you do have any questions, uh, leave me some comments and I will try to answer them as best I can. Other than that, watch your six, guys.